Welcome to the B-Side with Rufus Duffbaugh, with my partner in crime, Frank Steyer. We are going to do the weekend roundup tonight because there is no live show on Blog Talk Radio. Oh, well. All the problems with Blog Talk, it's better for you to hear it here anyway. Anyway, Frank, I hear you were at the Atlantic City Boardwalk this weekend. Tell us what you saw there. You know, it was uh, it was a great show. It was a great production. And, you know, I, I hate to even say, like, for a smaller promotion. Um, but, you know, if, if for what the budget that they had to put the show on, it was a magnificent show. Like, I'm telling you, 1,500 people are in the building. Way I understand Everybody, it, Frank, there was like a dozen matches on one card. It was well stacked. And the, and let me tell you something. The fights on the card were were really good. They were all good. A lot of good local talent. You know, some came from out of town. And you know, I I just I gotta give them. I gotta commend them. You know, if put more money behind Rising Star Promotions, and you're getting very you know extremely quality production uh, value. It was a great show. Uh, if any issues came about, they picked it up. The, the show ran smoothly, fight after fight. Like I said, all quality fights. The main event. Well, of course, the main was, event. Our boy Thomas Cornflake Lamana versus Gabriel Bracero. Uh, Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. You know, it was a great fight. It showed... Um, both guys, you know, their heart and where they're at. You know what I mean? And look, I, of course, I'm going to lean towards my boy. It was a close fight. I'm not going to say it was it was a, a robbery or anything like that. It was a close fight, but but I did. I had my boy win it. Um, the the reason is is that the 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 more effective punches landed in the fight, and and when when Cornflake did land them, I mean, I wish he landed a little bit more, but. He was using strategy. It was a smaller guy who moves. And, you know, Cornflake likes to mix it up. He likes to get in there. He likes to be on the ropes. He'd be on the ropes himself, have his opponent on the ropes, and mix it up. It was a different type of fight. It was more, look, if, if, if you go in there strategic, yeah, it's, 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 it's not, it looks like a great, one of the greatest strategic fights of all time. It's not there. But, each guy had a strategy. Each guy had respect for the other. And you can tell, by the way, it boxed. I could sit there and be like, oh, you know, Lamana, I thought maybe you, you could have threw a couple more punches. But no, he, it was his strategy to handle this style. And they both went in there with a game plan. And their game plans, all you know, they met. It was a tie. You know what I'm saying? They're racing. They, it's, it's whoever's game plan finishes, you know, crosses the finish line first. And they both get hit at the same time. So in, in that case, yeah, it was a good fight. And, you know, if you go in there, if you're looking for Gotti Ward, um, you know, and, and again, those type of fights, I love them. They're great for the fans. But for the health and well-being of fighters, they're not good. And I'm, I don't want to disrespect those type of guys that are in those fights. But you don't have to go in there and, and you know, try to, you know, mm-hmm. end the guy's career. You know what I'm saying? I don't, uh, I don't, I don't want to be Frank, overly you know, sensitive. I don't know, want to be you... overly sensitive on that oh, case. Oh, yeah. But no, it's absolutely. like, can I say one more analogy? Can I, and then one more go, thing. Go ahead, Frank. Frank. <laughs> go ahead, buddy. It's, it's, it's like in baseball, right? It's like in mm-hmm. baseball. You're a pitcher. Mm-hmm. You have the ability to throw a fastball and hit a guy in the head, hit a guy in the neck hit a guy in the side of the face, whatever. And physically, permanently injure them. You know what I'm saying? In, in baseball. But you have control. If you don't throw the ball at the batter. You throw it in the glove. Of course, you get a little bit. You, you throw outside of the strike zone and stuff like that. That's, that's the strategy of the thing. But you don't go in there to permanently injure the, your competition, your com- the other competitor on the other side. You go oh, in yeah. there, and, and listen, knockouts happen, and uh, that's what they sign up for. But it, there comes a time to where 
I my my belief is in professional boxing when it's on television, when you want to take it to the next level, go in there, have a strategy, but make it fun. It's, okay. it's not it's not really hard. But anyway, that's my spiel right there. No, from what I. Uh... You know, we made our big predictions, of course. You know, maybe we're too biased, but, you know, we picked LaMana to win, you know, uh, considering the size differentials and everything. You know, uh, I figured uh, Thomas would pick him off. But when you got a constantly moving object that is that much smaller than you, using another baseball analogy, <laughs> it's kind of like if you were trying to strike out a midget and the strike zone is only about half an inch big. You're not going to really be that as effective as you would going up against a Mark McGuire, six foot five, and whatever. Um, so you know, I hate that he came up short, but uh, as you know, I know, anyone in the business knows Thomas has his hands in an awful lot of things. He rarely, I mean, not rarely, but he doesn't devote as much time to actually boxing training as probably he should because his hand's in the promoting and doing all kinds of other things in the business. Um, so I think, you know, he's more of a guy to bank on. He's got many more years to go, unlike maybe Bracero, who's pretty much reaching the twilight maybe of his career. So, um, you know, it was very interesting. But speaking of you talking about boxing isn't about – really trying to annihilate anybody you know you win some you lose some you live to fight another day a tragedy happened overseas in great britain at doncaster um with scott westgraff um being announced the winner and a very competitive fight and then collapsing in the ring and dying shortly thereafter um you know it's one of them great tragedies we hate to see in boxing. I remember the very first tragedy as a fan in boxing, and that was in 1994 of Gerald McClellan, you know, one punch and uh, the lights went out forever. Um, deaf, blind, and uh, still believes it's uh, the 90s and he's the world champ, you know. Um, what What is your thoughts really on all that, Frank? Well, Rufus, you know, in this case, I tragedy anywhere. It's man, it's 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 just it's a sad thing, man. I mean, I'm not by using the word sad, I'm not giving it any justice, but it, tragic is the word, man. And and I didn't know Scott Westgarth. I I've never seen him fight. First time I heard of him, too. You know, I I saw the news. I believe it was one of the headlines were like light heavyweight injured. Um, you know, real bad and bad shape, and then uh, it was announced Scott Westgarth had died. And I didn't watch the fight. I think they took the fight down online. I don't know. I don't know if it was up yet. And I don't. I really. I don't want to watch the fight because I don't want to sit there and try to pinpoint where, what shot was the one that did it. You know, I, I, I've watched that something. You know, stuff similar to that, and. It's just not my cup of tea. I'm not interested in it. It's not my job to no, investigate. No. So I saw the a little. I didn't hear the interview because I couldn't turn the speakers up on the computer I was looking at. And they were like, "Yeah, oh, you can kind of see him, um, not oh, not all there. You know what I mean? Like at the end of this video, he does his interview. He he tries to sit up on the ring apron, and then he puts his hands over the face and the and the thing blacks out. And I don't want to know what happened after that. The only mm -hmm. thing that, that I know um, is that a professional boxer had passed away. Um, I just hope, you know, for his sake, for his family's sake, for everyone's sake, that he had the right medical care and he took the proper testing before going into that fight. You know, I don't know what the testing is like. It may have nothing to do with that, but I just have for the peace of mind um, that there was no slip-ups uh, nothing, every, uh, every, anything that was qualified that whatever commission qualified for these guys to get in there, they do it. You know what I'm saying? Bo it, 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 it's, it's sad that in boxing, you know, you hear about more boxers passing away from competition-related injuries than any other sport. You know, it's, 
it's truth. You don't really hear it. You do hear once in a while you'll hear like a professional athlete from the NBA, the NFL, um, the baseball, MLB. You hear once in a while someone dying in a car accident or, you know, so many unthinkable things, murder, whatever. You hear that. But you rarely hear about one of those athletes die, die while in competition. You hear dehydration stories, heart stories, someone who got it with a hit. Very rarely, but every now and then, I don't want to say it's not every weekend, but more within more time than, than we need it to, um, it's, you're always hearing about a fighter being injured. You know, brain bleeds, mm-hmm. taking too much trauma to the head. Um, you know, Daniel Franco, Pritchard Cologne, I, and I, I hate to bring up these names, uh, Magomed, Abdul, uh, Salamov. I hate to have to name these guys, and I know there's other people. I just wanted to name those. Those are – it's such tragedy. It's such – you don't know what these guys are going through. Like you said, Scott Westgarth or um, – Gerald Ger- Scott West- Westgarth, but Gerald McClellan had took a punch that when he finally came about, he didn't know what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't. He didn't know. He he woke up never the same. He woke up blind. What was he blind and just everything? Mm-hmm. That is that. I mean, that's unthinkable. Thinkable. And I can I can sit here and and say, hey, this is what we should do. This is what we shouldn't do. But you know, the only thing that I can I could say, and this is heartfelt. Um, uh, you know, just just I I wish nothing but the best. For, for the family. You know, I, it, the grieving process has to be horrible. I don't know if this guy is a father uh, or, or not, but he's, he's most likely a brother, uh, a son, a cousin. You know what I'm saying? Definitely mm-hmm. those. No, you've got to feel for the family. And, I, and, and listen, man, if, if I, I, I just, if it's any constellation, just, just a good vibe and a good, the good spirit goes to him, you know, I, 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 I hope God just looks over him and, and, and blesses him with the strength to get through this. Absolutely, in Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if I would say that there was some sort of medical test slip up in Great Britain. From my understanding, they are extremely strict and stringent. Not to say that America isn't, but... As we all know, each and every state in our country is different, Um, whereas in Great Britain, they're all controlled under one body, you know, uh, the triple BC. Um, But I have told people this many times, um, you know, you, you play basketball, you play baseball, you play football, you don't play boxing, um, to make another sports comparison. It doesn't matter whether you've got gloves on or not. You can't stop kinetic energy. And what a boxer goes through is pretty much like being tackled repeatedly over and over nonstop until it's over. Um, And even though this is the sport I love, the sport we all love, um, Scott West Garth is living proof that you can come out a winner um, in a fight and still die. Um, This is the sport of kings, the sport of men, and it has always been that way since the ancient Greek and Roman times. That is not going to change. Um, And I know a lot of people are going to bring up what can be done to make boxing safer, I, like I said, it doesn't matter what size gloves you got. You, you can't stop um, kinetic energy, and the brain really isn't built to take that kind of stuff. That's why the emphasis is always on defense, but it is very sad that uh, the last year and a half we've had Tim Haig and um, that one man who um, suffered a career um, ending injury but at the hands of Mike Perez um, up in New York. M- Magomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. M- Magomed, yeah. I mentioned you know, and, and I remember also about maybe a decade or so ago, it was Pink, um, 
Greg Page when he fought journeyman Dale Crow. And everybody thought, you know, Page was going to win that and then just one shot. When you have trained hands hitting you, gloves or no gloves, that's like a sledgehammer hitting you in the head. So, you know, the sport is dangerous. You know, and you should respect everybody who is in this business, no matter what level of competition they are, because quite frankly, the lights can go out at any time. Um, but we're going to ch- change directions from this very uh, depressing state. Um, like Frank said, you know, we wish would you that, mind, Rufus? Would you no, mind? Go ahead. Like, if go we ahead. Just can, if we just skip the rest of boxing, I mean. They had oh, yeah. the Superfly show. I yeah. I didn't see it, Rufus. I mean, yeah. I can I didn't. I honest to God, I didn't even read much about the fights. I've been talking to some people that watched it. I saw the results. I'm not hating or anything like that, but it just I just wasn't interested in it. I'm I'm focused on I'm focused on you know my business. What you know my personal business. You know coming mm-hmm. on coming on the B side with you, Rufus. Um, Obviously, top rank is is my business. I don't want to focus on what everybody else is doing. I want to focus on where where I'm going and just putting that effort towards. So I didn't I didn't really watch it. It's not a I don't know that you know it, it's, it's not a knock against the small men either. You know, um, it's just when the vast majority of guys competing you've never seen fight before and they have 30 or 40 fights and they all come from foreign lands that you probably never heard of or couldn't find on a global map. It's kind of hard to get amped up, you know, for that. So I understand Frank. Now you were talking about, um, WWE Elimination Chamber. It was it was here in my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. Absolutely. And I am um, I I could have been I could have went to the show. I just as it was going on, or maybe if it was as it was finishing, uh, it was just finishing up as as I landed, and I had to pick my daughter up after I got home. So I didn't get a chance to see it, but I did listened to a couple podcasts earlier today. I did listen to um, uh, What Culture and I kind of hear the breakdown of what it was. And, you know, there are usually all these guys out here that are doing it. Um, they give a good intake. Because I go back, I listen to what they say about Raw. I go back and watch Raw. And, you know, they're usually right. You know, if, they, if I have to listen to their stuff, if I listen to their stuff before it. So, I'm going to take it like this. It didn't sound like it was a bad pay-per-view. It, mm-hmm. was, it really didn't. It didn't sound. And I wish, you know, if, if if I was in town, I would have made a good effort to try to attend it. But what did you say about it? Like, what did what did you tune in for? What was your whole interest in the Elimination I'm, Chamber? I'm probably the harshest critic of the WWE. I mean, I really try to get into the ambiance of the shows, but... When I go back to, like, the 1980s and watch, like, Ric Flair versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for the NWA championship, you know, um, it makes everything, even the biggest pay-per-view matches they do, look like child's play. You know, WWE is now a parody and has been a parody of wrestling for quite a long time. Um, You know, call me a casual but the biggest thing that I was paying attention to was the official signing of Ronda Rousey. Um, I think it was last week we did another uh, little sit-down interview, you know, for the YouTube exclusives talking about her training video and, uh, you know, her WrestleMania appearance. And uh, quite frankly, uh, her acting ability really needs a lot of work. And quite frankly, I didn't really buy into, you know, the whole thing. And earlier today, I was listening to a podcast uh, with Dave Meltzer, um, the editor of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And he said, I can see the writing on the wall that this woman is being set up to fail um, before her career even starts. 
because she has no real ring experience unlike the other members of the four horsewomen of MMA who wrestled at least for a year, year and a half. Um, and they're going to put this big weight on Ronda's shoulders. You know, can she really carry it? And, you know, Dave Meltzer says no, and I kind of typically agree with him. That, you know, that's a good, that's a, that's a good assessment on it. I, again, I didn't, I didn't really get a chance. I didn't watch any highlights of it. Um, so I, I'm just strictly going on from what I've read and what was what was said. Now, interesting enough, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually read off of something. So I'm going to give them the credit. And the only reason why I'm going to give them the credit, well, that isn't the only reason why, because it's the right thing to do, but I'm going to give them the credit um, because I find it interesting that when I Googled Elimination Chamber results, the mm-hmm. top the top uh, uh, search result was Forbes.com Elimination Chamber results. So I'm going to read off of what they have to say just because they were the top. So I just want to see, and then I want to get your thoughts on it. So um, interesting. And shout out to the WWE for being as much because they're a publicly traded company. Never mind. That's why they're doing it. Uh, all right, so I'm looking at the elimination. Why, why Roman Reigns, WWE. So is it only doing the main event? Uh, I see why this is one of two. This is crazy, bro. This, this, I, I'm, I'm just reading through this, and I haven't seen one result. I'm not hating on it, but this is completely 100% for stock guys because you know why? Mm-hmm. They're they're running over who is number one and number two in the merchandise. So we're gonna stick it. We're gonna keep it simple. But that's very interesting. I suggest go read the <laughs> WWE articles on Forbes if, and and it make you decide if you're um, if you ever want to invest in the mm-hmm. WWE. So okay, CBSSports.com has the Elimination Chamber results. Twenty years ago, there was never a uh, never did CBS Sports give you wrestling results or cover, cover wrestling the way, they, way they, that they are. So times have definitely changed. First match, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, members of the Baylor Club, defeated the Miserage. Well, now it went over like a lead balloon for me, Frank. <laughs> well, well, CBS Sports graded that a C minus, which I also like that. It's pretty interesting. CBS Sports has a has a grading system here. Uh, then they're going to have the the next match of the show was the uh, women's elimin. I think that was the kickoff match, but I think the women's elimination chamber. Uh, we can get that. Uh, what did you get that? Uh, that volume down. Thank you. Um, was the women's elimination chamber match? It pitted the ch- current champion Alexa Bliss. Uh, facing Sasha Banks, Mickey Bay- Mickey James, Bailey, Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville to retain the title. Um, I've seen some of these girls. I've, I've seen them wrestle. But I'll tell you something. The girls are working really, really hard in the WWE. Um, but Alexa Bliss uh, successfully defended her championship, defeating uh, the remaining six women. Uh, women's championship match end up doing really good stuff. So they're nice little, nice little uh, write up on it, and they graded it an A minus. Rufus, I heard the same thing from what culture they graded this very high, um, and I read a few things else that it was pretty good. What did you see? Well, the way I understand it, because mind you. I love looking at the comments from what actual fans are saying rather than so-called editors and critics and all this because they want to give everything a blowjob, you know. But uh, a lot of the fans were pissed that, yet again, Alexa Bliss, you know, came out on top. And, um, yeah, you know, like I said, it seems to me like WWE doesn't want to listen to the fans anymore. They just want to follow their own script on whatever the hell they want to do. 
you know, and I made this um, comparison to you and I um, the last time we sat down talking about uh, Rhonda was that, you know, that when we were trying to break into professional wrestling, you know, the, the cardinal, number one cardinal rule was you listen to your audience, you know, and you feed off of that, and they do everything counter to it. Because everybody talks about how it is bullshit that Nia Jax keeps, you know, you know, coming up short, you know, and everybody thinks that Azuka, you know, is being too, I mean, Asuka, sorry, Asuka is being uh, shoved down everybody's throats. And this whole angle with Ronda is not being done really all that well. Um, you know, the match, from what I understand, is really good. But I'll probably be honest, you know, the workhorses in that ring is, um, you said Bailey was in that match. Mm-hmm. Bailey and uh, Mickey James are essentially the workhorses in those matches. I mean, let's be honest. You know, well, them, them bank, poor Sasha women. Bank. Them poor women have to dial it back like a dozen notches or so, just so the other ones can look good. I'm like, let them women go full bore, full tilt. Let well, show Mickey what they James, can do. Nikki James is, is is kind of the veteran in this one, Rufus. She's so she's not necessarily the workhorse. I wanted to. You forgot about Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks and Bailey are in the middle of a really good program right now with one another. Uh, Alexa Bliss. Is just super popular with the with the crowd. Her work is really good. You know, she's she's uh, a little bit smaller than everybody else, but her character and her performance inside the ring, her wrestling ability, it fits to a T. And I think that's why she's the champion. But you got Mickey James, Bailey, and Sasha Banks in there. Yeah, they know how to keep. They these girls have been running shows. I mean, uh, 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 stealing shows for years. Um, and then you add in some of the new women talent in there. You got Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. They were in the um, Paige faction. Um, and, I, and again, I, I'm, I'm completely losing my mind, but they were in the Paige faction, so they're getting that experience in with the veterans. They're getting experience with the, the, the three women that are now. You got Mickey James, who's the vet, who is having sensational matches. Her work is second to none right now. And, you know, um, Everybody else there, they're going to get to learn a lot. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, um, it's really good to see that they got that rating. And you mentioned Asuka and Nia Jax. They, they, they wrestled. They had a match later on in the night. Um, they had the bar defeat Titus Worldwide. Uh, that match was great at a C. And then it had Asuka uh, putting on her undefeated streak um, that goes back through the NXT rankings and uh she faces Nia Jax in in a match and you know had a little bit of hype around it you know both of you like you mentioned she's the big dominant girl and Asuka um got a pinfall in there I guess it was a roll up or or somewhat and it was great at a C plus now I I want to I want to kind of set and you you got to separate it's two different divisions It's, it's like the UFC you got the um, you know, sometimes the the women's fights, they, they main event. Sometimes they're a co-main event. Sometimes they mean a lot on the show. They always mean a lot on the show, especially when, on, when they're on the main card. So they opened with the Elimination Chamber, and then they had the two hard, most hard-hitting women in the division face off against each other. You give the first match what was the Elimination Chamber a grade of an A-. minus. Then you give the, again, the two, the two hard-hitting, speared women in the division Asuka and Nia Jax, they get a C plus as far as their performance in the match. Um, it's I kind of think that's a bit of a fail for um, for that this evening. You know, to the girls in the elimination chamber, sure, but for Asuka and Nia Jax, the stock should should certainly drop um, for not going in there and delivering. Yeah, they're not going to be able to use the props that are in the elimination chamber, but they could have done something simple. Um, well, I, I think personally, if I could kind of intervene just a little bit, uh, of course. Since, this is CB, since this is CBS, you know, and they're getting involved, I have to think that these critics gave maybe such a high rating to the Elimination Chamber 
Not so much because it was so great, but because it was the first. The first of its kind, I got you. You know, the first of its kind, so it's this historical perspective thing, you know, and, um, you know, uh, I I think that has a lot to do with it because when you have the big show and then you have to follow it up with just two women, you know, in a regular ring, of course it's going to, the momentum's going to go down. You know, it takes extremely talented people to build that back up and everything else, but the infant. You know, all the emphasis was on the elimination chamber, so that wasn't their job per se to try to outshine that. But I think, in all fairness, um, them too, they probably should have got a B rating. But that's going to be a rivalry that's going to build up in time anyway to a big crescendo anyway. All right, now fair enough, fair enough on that, Rufus. But I'm going to tell you this: I mentioned earlier that I also t- earlier today, as I was getting a shower, I turned on the what culture. Uh, I was listening to, I, I don't want to say it's their podcast, but it's their channel, and they gave their, their review of the, the pay-per-view, and it is the same, and these are from the, these are the guys from the UK. These are the same exact scores, I mean, grades that they're given. They said, they said that, um, I'm reading the next match after that, it was Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, a feud that is being, that, a lot of people don't understand why it's going the way it is. Hopefully they have some type of, like, really good end game in this storyline or they're just, like, I don't know, punishing these, these two guys. But it's the same. Every match that I reviewed from CBS um, pretty much matches the same review that I've that I seen from What Culture. So, you know, Matt Hardy beat Bray Wyatt, defeated him, pinned him, um, and it was just, you know, the the author here, and I don't, I don't have his name up here, his or her name up here, but it's just the Woken One showed off more of his supernatural abilities as his character continues to evolve. The match, however, was largely forgettable in part due to the crowd's preference to focus on beach balls and the wave. So, you know, that's it, it, it wasn't that much of of a match there. And, and that's it. I'm just, I don't, we don't have mm-hmm. to sit here and dissect this, but they also graded what was after that match, and that was the Ronda Rousey contract signing. Uh, it had Kurt Angle involved. Kurt Angle, who is kind of hinting that he's most likely or probably going to be the partner for um, Ronda Rousey, possibly. Or, you know, uh, maybe they pull a, a, a swerve or a curveball in there and bring in the Rock. But looks like Angle's going to be into that, in, that, in that match in some capacity. Um, and, you know, had Rousey uh, get into a little bit of a confrontation with Stephanie McMahon, and then Triple H comes in, he intervenes. He gets put through a table. I've seen this. He gets put through a table by some judo, not even a judo move. It looked like a choke slam or a sidewalk slam. And then Stephanie McMahon comes over and, and slaps her, slaps her pretty hard. And Rhonda turns her head, gets back up slowly, and Stephanie McMahon walks off, and she signs a contract. I, what did you think? Oh, well, it's kind of like I alluded to earlier. I didn't quite buy it, um, primarily because, you know, the script writers and WWE, they want everybody to do these long-ass promos, everything, because, you know... Your natural instincts tell you that if you have two people who don't like each other, you're not going to listen to the other person say some shit. You're just going to haul off and get them. You know, they they just make it too orchestrated. But um, the the most genuine thing in that whole thing was when Stephanie McMahon slapped Ronda Rousey after she slammed Triple H through the table. And that was a legitimately hard slap, and Ronda looked legitimately pissed, you know, after that had happened, and Stephanie McMahon bailed out of the ring. Um, You know, I'm not really liking the idea of her coming into WrestleMania doing a tag team with Stephanie and Triple H and all that. I I rather would have seen her in a big um, triple threat, quadruple match, you know, whatever, with all the other women and work her way up, you know, that way. But, you know, it's their company. 
you know, but I think things could have been well, done. Well, I mean, I mean, look, listen, let's 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 talk about let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. And this is where I I agree with you, but I 100% I disagree with you. This is like where someone like Big Jim, shout out to Big Jim, um, mm-hmm. uh, from Top Rope Radio. But this is somewhere like Big Jim would go, you know, oh, she should go to the developmental and she should do indies. No, she shouldn't because if she does that. She loses her star power. This is Ronda Rousey. This is the one, If besides Conor McGregor, but you can even argue just as big, the most rec, one of the most recognizable MMA mm-hmm. stars ever. Now, you know, she's been in movies. She's transcended uh, women's sports, not just combat sports, just women's sports. Uh, she helped professional wrestling. It's What she's done is, is amazing. She'll she'll go down in history as a living legend, a legend. Oh, yeah. oh this, yeah. This is the same as when WWE brings in Mike Tyson. Now, Mike Tyson obviously didn't stay. He did a couple one-offs. But Ronda Rousey, if you put her and make her earn it like Asuka and like Bailey and Sasha Banks and whoever, if you go out and make her earn it, she's not going to have that star power. You well, the thing with me, because I'm going to disagree just slightly, I'm not saying, you know, make her slow down and be like everybody else. After all, she's special. But for me, if I was guiding her career, I would be looking at her and I'd be like, she's the next Goldberg. And I'd be like, you're not going to sell for anybody. You're going to stand like the rock of fucking Gibraltar and you're going to annihilate everybody who you touch and have one hell of a long winning streak. And then you cultivate that with, you know, um, a rivalry between the four horsewomen of wrestling and the four horsewomen of MMA with a big title clash with Charlotte Flair. That's what I would do. But the way they're doing it, I'm like, you're, you're doing all the pizzazz and no substance. We need to have her do some substantive matches, pretty much off the spot looking like a killer. Because that's what she's got to look like. That's what people will buy into, and as far as I'm concerned. That's, you're right, and I agree. I thought you were going to say she had to do that. No, she does need to be a Goldberg. She does need to be a Brock Lesnar. Um, she has to be what Brock Lesnar was when he came back. from when he, when he left the UFC to come back to WWE, he has to be. And now, what I'm, now you're going to think I'm crazy. If the match at WrestleMania ends up being... Triple H, Stephanie McMahon versus Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey. Uh, I don't be surprised if in that match, you know, Ronda Rousey like she did, she grabbed Triple H and basically choke slammed him. That's a 250, 60 pound man. Um, you know, I know she's judo and all that type of stuff, but I don't think she's been that great of a judo practitioner as a late. But who knows? I could be wrong. What she did there was a little extreme in that match. But what I can see happening in the Royal Rumble, not the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, is Ronda Rousey has the match with Angle. She gets in there. um, She plays with Stephanie, and they get out. And then eventually you're going to have a little something where it's her and Triple H, Ronda and Triple H. She gets off some moves on Triple H. Stephanie comes in, distracts her. Triple H turns around, kicks her. Pedigrees are on the chair. Stephanie gets the pin. Boom. That's WrestleMania, right? That's that's like, okay, this is how you're going to beat her. But then she comes back and she's pissed, right? Mm-hmm. And she's pissed. And Stephanie McMahon's on Raw. So you bring Stephanie McMahon, you, you, Stephanie McMahon and, and, and Triple H say, okay, now you've got to earn your spot on Raw. You're going to SmackDown. We don't want you. We're sending you to SmackDown. For one, it's to protect Stephanie from, from being attacked by mm-hmm. uh, Ronda, her having to worry about Ronda on that, on that thing. And she goes, all right, you're going to have to earn your spot back. You're going to SmackDown. She goes to SmackDown, and she does exactly what you say she should do. She runs through that wa- roster twice over. You know what I'm saying? Twice over. I, goes, I can see it. I can see it that way only because – um, Charlotte Flair is at SmackDown, and that is the match everybody wants and to see. You, you can, so. And you can main event a pay-per-view with that match. So mm-hmm. you go, 
whatever the main, the major SmackDown pay-per-view, because they have their separate pay-per-views. You, you put Ronda Rousey in a gimmick match on like a SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Rumble, Mania type stuff. That's cool. But in them individual matches, you lead it up and whatever the, I, I can't, like say it's the Money in the Bank pay-per-view or something. I don't even know if they do that anymore. But you put her on that in the main event with Charlotte Flair as the main event, and you put whoever the world champion is against whoever the top contender is underneath that, but you bill it, Rousey Flair, right? Mm -hmm. That brand is going to make money. While over on the other side, you still have guys like Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. You keep Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey off. You don't keep them on the same show. No. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 if Brock is on Raw, you keep Brock on Raw. Because Brock, no matter what, he's still that something special. He still has that quality that he only he has and nobody else has. You know, he may not yeah, there, always there is a rumor that ha- came over the Internet today, though, that yeah, I saw after, after WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar may be gone and going back to the UFC. And that's, and that's highly likely. And it's highly likely is, and 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 there was a, there was a a TMZ video with Paul Heyman, and they brought it up. They said, so hey, if Brock Lesnar goes back to the UFC, do you think he could be successful? And he, and Paulie made a made a very good response, and I'm paraphrasing here. Mm-hmm. He said, he said that Brock Lesnar is going to be even more dangerous with the inactivity because Brock Ch- Lesnar had a chance to rest. He had a chance to let the in- injuries that had hurt him um, while he was competing in, in, in the UFC to heal. And he's in the WWE. He's not working every night. He's working six, seven times a year, right? So he's out there getting physical. So he has to stay ready and stay prepared, physically prepared, to show up for TV. So he's in shape, but he has let his hand heal. He has let his legs heal. He has let his chin heal. He has let... Wherever he, he was inflicted with any type of physical trauma in, in, in a fight, he has let that rest. And he said Brock Lesnar will be the most dangerous guy in MMA if he was to go back. And I, I can, it's, it remains to be seen, but I don't disagree with that. I think, in a way, I don't think he was just cutting a promo and t- t- telling everybody how great his guy was. I think in his mind, he said, he, he's making a little bit of sense. Look, there's people that know wrestling and, a, and the UFC much, much more than I do. I don't want to claim to say I know this more than anybody else, and I have all the right answers because I don't. This is a strictly, obviously, this is my opinion. This is your opinion. But I, I honestly, Rufus, I think Brock Lesnar would be still effective if he went back in the UFC, especially with this heavyweight division. I Maybe not throw him whoever is the, the world champion or the number, two, the number one contender right off the, well, the bat. Way I, but, well, the way I look at it, because the other day, Cain Velasquez was at WWE um, at the Elimination Chamber, I believe, and he hinted that he would love to be get into the WWE as well. So... Would it be any surprise that Lesnar goes back to the UFC, Velasquez goes in the WWE, and when Lesnar comes back, he does a program of Cain Velasquez? That that is very probable. That could happen. Um, but as far as your hypothesis about somebody coming back, you know, despite the inactivity and being more dangerous, um, let's go back to like Thomas Lamana. And his match with Gabriel Bracero. Bracero had not fought in like a year and a half, two years since Pauly Molinalgi. Um, you know, and he pulled out a very, you know, co- highly competitive fight with Lamana. Um, I've seen guys come back, you know, and all they needed was just a little bit more rest because their body's a little bit older and they could bounce back even stronger. So that, I can see that. The division is kind of wide open at heavyweight anyway at the UFC. A lot of people don't want to admit that. Other than Stipe Miavec, um, you know, the division is wide open. And he's getting older. Stipe Miavec, he's still, he's still a, um, you know, he's still aging. He's getting older. 
I mean, um, I can I can so, easily see um, Lesnar getting in a program with Fabricio Verdum, and Verdum is on his last legs. Or they could put him in with Andre Orlovsky, who's on his last legs. So and is and is more of a striker and, and a stand up mm-hmm. guy, and that would be straight. You know, that would be in oh, a perfect yeah. scenario. You need you need somebody like that when when they brought him back against Mark Hunt. You know, there was Mark Hunt is a is a puncher, and you, you put Mark Hunt in there with with other rugged, brawling type of guys. You don't put Mark Hunt in there with guys that take it to the ground that have you more know, than and, one um, physical advantage last, of them. And this guy that um, Mia Cech beat, um, Nagaro. Um, Naganu. You know, Naganu, yeah. yeah. He, he got exposed as being a very one-dimensional guy with no conditioning. So really, right. that's a guy Lesnar could probably beat after like a tune-up, and then be like right in line for contention with the title again. And yeah, that's true. And that's and look, if if he only does a one-off, if he only comes back and does one match, I mean one match, one fight, then 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 good for him. That's where that that's what he wants to do. That's what he can do. And and again, man, there's not many athletes out there that that are quite like him. Well, I, I got to bring something up because I was watching Raw earlier, and John Cena, who, from what I understand, lost his spot, you know, during the men's elimination chamber match for WrestleMania, he made a, a big, grandiose speech in the middle of the ring calling out The Undertaker for WrestleMania. But he was like, ah, oh, but that will never happen. You know, you don't drop something like that unless it's going to happen. I mean, wrestling's too predictable anymore. But the return of The Undertaker at WrestleMania, I mean, that would be a pretty good match. What do you think, Frank? Yeah, no, absolutely. No, absolutely. Because the way I understand it, you know, John Cena, he's more involved in the movies than ever. Um, his he himself has got a lot of wear and tear on his body. He's admitted in um, interviews that he's getting less and less um, amped up to hit the gym and keep doing all the matches. So it's quite possible he could do some sort of run in with the Undertaker, beat the Undertaker, um, and then retire himself. I could see something of that nature happening. No, no, and, and 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 look, it's it's. I guess the match had never happened. I don't remember them two ever really having a match. I'm pretty well, that sure was the it point he made. That was the point he made in his speech. He said we have over thirty WrestleManias combined, and we never once met each other at WrestleMania. So yeah, so that's a that's a that's that's a, that'll be a decent match. It'll be a simple match. It's two guys that can can only do so much, and you know, well maybe maybe they go in there and they put. Put on a good show. You keep it simple. You don't try to go out there and, and you know. Well, you know, it's like you going on about uh, people recovering, you know, needing time. Yeah. The, you know, the Undertaker coming back from last WrestleMania, you know, a whole year. You know, so who knows? That's true. That's true. You never know, man. So, look, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's shaping up. Where, where were we going with that? That's the thing. Where were we going with that? Let's, 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 That's what I love about me and Frank doing stuff because, you know, we get so wrapped up in talking about different shit that we lose our spot, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and that's so. So it went from the ra- the the reality contract signing. So that's yeah. okay. That's done there. But I think we right. more than covered the elimination chamber. Like, well, we didn't much. cover the main event. Well, we can do that. Let's go ahead. It's, I look. It's real. It's real. It's real quick. And I just want to. I kind of want to again. CBS dot com. Uh, what culture dot dot com have had the same type of critique on on <coughs> on these matches. Excuse me. <laughs> they gave it a C. This one's a C minus. Um, they gave this the, this main event a C minus. I know that what culture had said it was great. How they made. Braun Strowman really strong in the match. Braun mm-hmm. Strowman pinned everybody but Roman Reigns. 
who inevitably won mm-hmm. the the elimination chamber. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, no, he didn't pin Elias. Elias somehow made it to the end, and then Roman Reigns got Elias. So they were, I guess they were trying to troll <coughs> the WWE fans by thinking maybe there was a chance Elias was going to win. Again, I didn't see the match, but Roman Reigns won. Um, it's been rumored that he was going to win. It's pretty much it's been expected he was going to win. Um, you know, I didn't see the match, so I'm not going to critique it. I'm just going to tell you what CBS Sports. They, they, you know, they didn't think very much of it. CBS Sports. I mean, didn't see. The, the the way I understand, you know, reading up on everything, you know, it's been said for months and months, pretty much since the last WrestleMania, because Roman Reigns beat the Undertaker. They said next WrestleMania is going to be more or less Lesnar and Reigns. Lesnar's going to do the J-O-B, and Lesnar's going to go back to the UFC, and we're going to have a champion that nobody wants. That is kind of the, the most irritating thing about Roman Reigns. Not that he ain't a good worker or that he don't have a good you know presence to him or anything. Just a lot of people have not liked him for a lot of different reasons, Um and the thing, I feel so bad for Braun Strowman, who, by the way, Frank, I seen you post a video about Braun Strowman earlier today. Apparently he was at the boxing events, um, and you were filming him on your phone. But Did you see you... that? It wasn't him, though. It was just somebody that looked like him. <laughs> Frank. That reminds me of Shannon Briggs, like, running across the hotel room thinking some fat guy was Fury. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, hope, I, hope they steal, I hope they steal it. I hope they steal the video and they, yeah. and they use it like that. Like, they say, oh, my God, it's because I was made. No, it wasn't. It wasn't him. <laughs> that, was the, that was the best part. And, and, and the guy heard me. The guy heard me because I guess he knew. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I did He was. He was just one of the guys that were working at the uh, working at the Security the production and set and everything. No, no, he was setting everything up. He was like oh. production. So he was like the setup guy, and and it was funny because when I first seen him, I was like, God, oh, this guy looks like Braun Strowman, mm-hmm. and and not not everybody got it. Like Tim Cudges got it, and and and, and Mark Abrams had got it, but they didn't. They didn't. It was just funny how how. And I was like, oh, Braun Strowman. Yeah. And, 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 and he turned around and he looked, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's, going, he's definitely going for the Braun Strowman look. So. Yeah. So, and he was lifting, like, he was lifting pillars up and shit by himself. It was yeah. pretty funny. But, no, um, getting back to Braun Strowman, um, it's one of the aggravating things for me um, is this guy's being built as being, you know, pretty much like the next – you know, phenom, you know, the next big red machine, you know, all this stuff. Um, he's being... Yeah, he's going to be bigger than Kane, dude. I think he's... They're looking, yeah. at, they're looking at Hogan. You know, that, because they're building him up, you know, like I said. He, he's like Mark Henry and Ken Patera, you know, squared. Because yeah. they have this guy flipping over semi-trucks and all this other shit. And yet he continues to lose. And that's the thing that boggles my mind. I'm like, if you got a guy who can flip fucking semi trucks like the Incredible Hulk, this guy should never fucking lose ever, no matter who's up against him. You know, so it's one of the aggravating things. You know, it reminds me of Al Snow telling a story about Tony Atlas, where for weeks and weeks they build up Tony Atlas. Um, with having like a 500 pound, you know, barbell, you know, laying for the fans to try to pick up and everything, and they couldn't do it. So here was Tony Atlas. They brought the weight into the ring, and then he like pressed it over his head and everything. And then like a week later, he had his pro debut, and he had a 20 minute schmoz with this guy who was a journeyman. And the promoter said, thanks a lot, you fucking, you know, gave out the business as being phony and a fraud and a fake. And he's like, well, what the hell did I do? I had the best match on the card. And he was like, a guy your size against him, as strong as we build you up to be, should never fucking lose. So, 
you know, that's the thing with me with Braun Strowman. It is an absolute travesty. You got this guy who's literally superhuman. He should be in the world's strongest man contests or whatever, and he can't beat nobody. You know, that's kind of the funny part. And that's true. He's gonna, he's gonna get. He, 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 I think, I think they're doing the slow build. I think he's got a kind. Of, it's a different, it's a different story than when it was in the '80s. Like now, it's not. Uh, it's not being hidden if these guys have to go to training in, mm-hmm. in um, you know, back in the day, you didn't know a guy went to a wrestling, wrestling school. You just thought they, they came up, they, they went, mm-hmm. maybe they did backyard, they went to ECW, and then they made it. You yeah, didn't they know were pit they were fighters or some shit. <laughs> you know? Exactly, but now there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole thing where they're glorifying the training center. So when you hear... Uh, they're having tryouts. So they're just having tryouts for just anybody, not just uh, um, wrestlers, but just anybody. Someone has the look, someone has the the athletic ability, they're doing it. So it's not being hidden anymore. So in this case, they know this guy came from bodybuilding. They know he's not a monster in real life. You know, they're trying to portray him as a monster. They, you, if you go look at his YouTube videos, he does a bunch of comedy stuff. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, you could tell he's going to probably go in the movies. Um, I think that's where they're kind of try, kind of leading it to him. So he has a personality. He's funny, and you know, in a way, yeah, kind of like Kane. Kane was Kane would be try to be serious, but you can, you know, it kind of had it was scary to kids, but then mm-hmm. would also turn because he was big and imposing. He would he would turn on his his comedic side. Um, I think I think with Strowman, it's again, it's a whole. You had mentioned it. They're going to put on a belt. Uh, they're going to put the belt on someone, the, the guy that nobody wants to have the belt on. And the, the thing is about that is, oh, it's going to people are like, oh, but the people are going to stop watching the product. No, they're going to tune in because they hate the guy who has the belt so much that they're going to tune in every week to hope that whoever he wrestles well, takes the belt. You're, so they you're can right. Hear. No, you're it's you're the right. New because heel. it's the same and formula. It, and it's the same thing with Strowman. It's, you know, the, same it's the same thing with thing. Strowman. It's He's got to make his way. Well, you know, it's like uh, when Hulk Hogan, you know, beat like the Iron Sheik for the title. You know, the every the guy everybody hated. You know, and they're giving it, you know, to the guy that everybody's building up to be something special. You know, um, but but for me, like I said, it's asinine for me to build somebody up cartoonishly strong. And yet he still loses, but um, yeah, again, look, and then, again, again, he'll get his different... he'll get his way. He'll get his way. He has to remember like this. This is, we're, I'm I'm slowly but surely just be, just from from being on the B side tonight. I'm slowly but surely starting to figure out the wrestling business. I'm I'm looking at it like a guy. Who, I'm speaking on it like a guy who just knows a little bit about how it used to be. But like right now, what did I tell you when I googled? Elimination Chamber results. What was the first thing that came up? <laughs> Forbes. Yeah. Forbes. You know what I'm saying? It's a mm-hmm. it's a business now. These guys are making. Um, these guys are are making. Um, they're, they're publicly traded. Oh so yeah. They're if, if they're they're trying to sit there and sell T-shirts and sell merchandise, and that's what it was. Like I mentioned, they were saying, "Oh, this guy's number." Uh, number two in merchandise sales. Roman Reigns or Cena dropped the number two now. It's AJ Styles, and you know they're looking how the business is changing, and they're just waiting. They're that maybe they're trying to get the sympathy of the fans behind Strowman. I don't know. It's just but, but the, then again, it's, it's a whole new business to figure figure out. But but then again, I always have to remind myself that WWE has changed so much um, in terms of demographics. Because they don't play to people who are of our generation who grew up on guys who literally gave their bodies to the business, so to speak, you know. Yeah. Who came up with everything off the top of their head. They didn't need a script, you know. But, um, you know, so if I want to watch real wrestling, I'll turn on New Japan on Access TV, you know, or I'll watch Ring of Honor or something like that. But, um... You know, I, 
You know, it's not my cup of tea how they do it these days. I wish they would go back to at least the early 2000s way of wrestling was, you know. But, uh, you know, apparently they make a shitload more money doing it this way than ever before. I I can't see why people would spend money for it, but uh, whatever works. Ruth, it's because the times have changed music is different. You know, even the music that you thought sucked back then is ten times worse. You know, oh, if, yeah. you're, if you're if you're like an genre um, was well but that here's that's the thing is and then I'm flushing the toilet as as we're as we're doing this. So we apologize <laughs> for the uh for the uh that that ain't um, a first but sound effect. No, it wouldn't be the first. But sorry, that ain't a that's first. My, that's, that's, that's my. It's not Rufus's unprofessionalism. That's just that's no, no, no. I mean, back. like way back in the day when we first had shows, the only privacy Frank ever had was like sitting on the toilet, you know, doing that's, all and the that's, interviews. And that's and, that, and that's the truth. But but as a, and I, and it's hard to come to terms with it. You know, as, yeah. as things are as as they're getting younger. I mean, as as things are not to our liking, and we're like, oh, I wish it was like the good old days. It's changing, man. We're getting older. Mm-hmm. Things are moving faster than we want it to move, or they're moving no, in it's the direction. It's like this um, interview i seen with, like, Snoop Dogg and, like, 50 Cent and a couple other people, and they were like, the shit that is out today is not rapping, and they all sound the same. It's, it's the same yeah, I, and, <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I saw that, and then, listen, I agree. I agree with them. But it's because they're the type of music that Snoop Dogg is the music that I listen to. I don't yeah. listen to the Migos, and I don't listen to Rich Homie Kwan and whoever Little these Wayne guys are. And and they got tattoos on their – and listen, I'm not knocking them because these guys are making a lot of money. These guys are making the same amount of money that guys like Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent used to make, but they're not making now. So it's, it's, it's like this. You can change with the times. There's mm. nothing wrong with you and I – being the age we are and saying, you know what, I'm actually a Roman Reigns fan because I think they get it. I think, I think it's like this. They're, it, they're, everything seems like it's wide open. Everything's all out in the open, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a work, right? It's a, but they're working us, bro. This is Vince McMahon. This is a guy that, yeah, wrestling was fake, but he still in the 80s, the 90s, he still had thousands, tens of thousands. 30s, 40s, 50s, 90s of thousands of people showing up to his events because he made them a believer that when Hulk Hogan wrestled Andre the Giant, it's, you know, it's body slammed him at the Pontiac Silverdome. He made people a believer. Yeah, it wasn't real, but people showed up screaming and hollering, thinking it was real. Kids, grown-ups. And it, and it continued to happen years after years. And then when the Hogan era kind of dwindled away, he moved into the next era. You know, it was a little bit of a transitional period after Hogan. Shawn uh, Michaels, kind of, Bret Hart. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. But it was, it was the attitude era that took that next era that made people that, you know what? People still know this thing is fake, but they're putting theatrics in front of us that guys like Rufus and I can relate to. Kids can relate to. Men, women, children, everybody can relate to. It doesn't matter what your nationality or your gender or your race is. You could re- you could relate with the, what they were doing, and then there was a transitional period, and now I think we're coming into the boom of things. I think now you know you got Brock Lesnar. I think he's going to kind of start handing down. If, if Roman Reigns is the, is the guy he passes the torch to, then that's fine. It's the right guy. They they the, Vince McMahon is a master at working the fans. The people didn't want to get behind Roman Reigns, right? They booed him when when he was hoping they cheer him. He didn't get mad. He embraced the boo and then made you think, spread rumors out there for people to say that, oh, they're not happy. You know, they're, they're, they, they're mad at the fans for sabotaging. Uh, they're flushing the toilet again. They're mad at the fans for, <laughs> for sabotaging the product. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's yeah. not the case. That's what they want. You want a fan's reaction. You want a crowd's reaction. At this stage, Roman Reigns isn't wearing T-shirts. He ain't wearing Roman Reigns T-shirts. Even though he has them and people still buy them, there's going to come a time where they're going to figure him out, and then it's going to be like, you know what, I like Roman Reigns. You go from hating this guy so much for so long 
then eventually you're going to say, you know what, I respect him. Because he's not having bad matches. He's not. He's getting, he gets the, the biggest, loudest crowd reaction than anyone else in the friggin' building. Yeah, he's not the best technical wrestler, high flyer, nothing like that. No. But for as big as he is, he's having good matches, and the crowd reacts to him the loudest. You know what I'm saying? You release the most energy out of yourself when you're the louder you are. You ever hear tell them when they say when you're stressed out, just go and scream. And the reason you don't want you don't just go out and scream as loud as you want to. You know, it's like putting a couple rounds on a heavy bag. If you go out, you go ah, you're letting that energy out. So if it you you know because you have to, it's, it's in there. But when you're giving people a reason to say ah, at the top of their lungs, you suck. Ah. And it started with John Cena. You know what I'm saying? Half the crowd loved him, half the crowd hated him. Mm-hmm. That's where it is right now. That's how it's. That's how it's getting. No, I, I can't really argue against what they do per se. You know, in the directions because I know they're fucking with us. You know. You know, part of it's testing the waters to see who sells. You know, and part of it is you know to. It's all about misdirections, you know, even though this business is more wide open than ever. Um, they still do that. They tried to do that with, like, uh, the Royal Rumble, saying, oh, well, Ronda Rousey ain't coming. Oh, well, she actually is here. You know, they try to jerk the chain, you know. But um, I, I guess for, from my perspective, you know, we grew up in the era of excellence, you know, with great performers. And when I see people like from NXT or ROH and they come over to WWE, they dial it down so much that I always like, if you really want to see Charlotte Flair in great matches, watch her shit before she came to WWE, <laughs> you know, or something like that, you know, or uh, AJ Styles. I feel that same way. AJ Styles and Kenny Omega may very well be the two best wrestlers in the world but they dial it back. Well, at least uh, AJ Styles dials it back so much when he could do so much more. But, um, you know, I, I agree and, and with you. And you, you, and you got it. No, and you, and you got it, and you have to. And, and, and that's, look, this is where it's going. And I think, like, for the first time that we got a chance to really, like, get in, in depth on, on wrestling here, it's it it's good. It's just more, I think, that the, you got to figure out. I'm, I'm not watching it as faithful as I used to, but I do record it every Monday, every Thursday, or not Thursday, um, every Monday, every Tuesday, uh, Raw and SmackDown, I record Ring of Honor, uh, I record another local um, indie show that, that, that comes on TV, I'm not really catching on with it, but I know it's there, I know it exists, so I'm kind of getting well-rounded you know, I'm trying to get into getting getting to know again, know it again. It may take me a while to fast forward through stuff, but, you know, it's guys like us, you mm-hmm. know, and there's some really good guys out there that I listen to. And, you know, I'm going to give them a shout-out because, it's you know, they're doing their thing. It's for culture. Um, you you know, Meltzer's pretty good, even though I know you got to pay for Meltzer's uh, info, but he's good, you know. I mean, if you're, if you're that. Well, I know the one I listen to probably the most is um, the Jim Cornette, you know. Um, yeah, broadcast. Cornette's good. I, like I'll, I can listen to court. I'll tell you what, if I have to do a long drive, I'll put in like um, 10 hours of uh, Jim Cornette shooting and just listen. To well, yeah, I can, I can handle, I, I can, I know, listen, he's good. He's, he's from, you know, he's from closer to your, your type of area. I think you see from Tennessee. I'm not saying you're around the corner from Tennessee, but you're the master of the heartland, bro. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's your territory. Um, shit. I gotta, I, I gotta take this. Sorry, bud. I take this call. Well, while Frank's gonna take that call and everything like that, um, because after all, we know he's a very busy man working for ESPN and top rank. Uh, I believe Frank's like second in command, if not, you know, second from the top, you know, from Bob and you know everybody else. Um, there's so much to cover, and I got like uh, raw on my DVR, like, paused, you know, and I love DVR, you know, so I could always, like, rewind shit back, everything, but uh, I guess going into the boxing just a little bit because of, um, 
we were talking about that kind of, I can't even say the first half because we devoted only a few minutes to it and we straight into wrestling, but uh, upcoming is the big heavyweight title clash with Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz, the battle of the unbeatens. That is going to be one hell of a contest. Um, Luis Ortiz with the great amateur pedigree, you know, Cuban boxing. Um, you have Deontay Wilder, who also has the amateur pedigree, you know, the bronze medal. Um, you're going to have two guys who are two champions, you know, WBA, WBC, clashing. Uh, Deontay Wilder has been doing a lot of interviews with uh, Ring Magazine. You can see a lot of them clips over on the Facebook page there. Um He's saying he's going to demolish and destroy Luis Ortiz, that he has no respect for Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz, he's saying he has no respect for Wilder. Um, He's got that very sneaky left hook. Uh, This is going to be a very explosive fight. Um, I know we're going to get more in-depth on that match when time goes on, but we're going to... um, I guess I've already dropped my prediction a few times on it. I'm leaning towards Deontay Wilder, KO between round six um, and seven, though I wouldn't be surprised if it ended in the fifth or the eighth. But I believe anywhere from the fifth to the eighth round, it's over, with Deontay Wilder coming out on top. But I do believe there's going to be moments in that fight where he's going to get shook up himself. Um, And then earlier today or maybe it was yesterday, Tony Bellew was making remarks on Sky Sports saying that he hits harder than Tyson Fury, is better than Tyson Fury, and Tyson Fury released a very comical response video of him watching TV, rewinding it over and over and over again, of Bellew uh, saying his bullshit, and Fury laughing his ass off saying, I'm coming back. Bigger and better than ever, the return of the Mac. And I found it very enjoyable. Um, uh, Tony Bellew has alluded that after David Hay, he wants to go back to cruiserweight and take on Usyk, get back them belts, show that he's the top man at, at cruiserweight. But yet he's rated number six in the world by the WBC, um, which I find that to be rather ludicrous, but hey, whatever. You know, if I owned my own organization, I guess I'd rank anybody the way I wanted to, too. Um, But it would be very interesting to see whether or not Bellew will actually take on Tyson Fury. Um, I don't believe it's going to be a competitive fight at all. I believe Fury's going to get a tune-up before ever mixing it up with Bellew. But that is going to be very, very interesting when that comes off. I absolutely positively cannot wait for it to happen. Um, I think we're all making bets at the ATG radio crew who is going to be the guy that Tyson Fury fights in his comeback. Um, But it's going to be very interesting. And I believe Frank is back. I'm back. I'm back. That's what I thought. you You can hear the background a little bit coming in. But, yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Um, sorry, I had to think I was a I was a work call, so I had to take that real quick. Um, no, I, but, I, I told him I figured it'd be a work call. Um, but no, um, we, I touched a little bit on Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz coming up. We're going to do more of an in depth thing the night before that fight happens, if not the day of the fight. And also alluded to the comments Tony Bellew made on Sky Sports um, about Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury doing a response video, laughing his ass off about it. So there you go. <laughs> Thought we go back to boxing a little bit, you know, just slightly smidgen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's all. That's all. That's all good. Um, um, I don't know what else is there. I mean, we're coming back. We're just we're gonna we're gonna wrap this and then come back. We we can do you know whatever, but you know. Um, I reckon we can wrap things up right now. I mean, there's plenty of time to do more stuff tomorrow, you know, yeah. the next day, all that other stuff. We covered all bases over this weekend. And uh, once again, our sincerest condolences to uh, the West Garth family. Jesus bless all of you. And thank Absolutely. you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, 
We are not exactly certain when the actual live radio shows will return, but they will return promptly and sooner rather than later. Um, So thank you all for joining us on the B-Side. I'm Rufus Duffball. This is Frank Steya saying good night. Oh shit, I just seen that comment.